Hey, uh, hello everybody. My name is Jose Rocha with 3H Engineering and Construction. And I just wanted to make a video real quick to uh, kind of go through the steps and processes to determining what the 500 year flood elevation is. And um, we're going to go through an example. Um, just to see what exactly are the steps and where to get the information. Um, a preliminary information at least uh, in some cases and um, the actual information in other cases. Uh, but let's just go through one example. Uh, I'm going to use um, an old zip code uh, that I'm very fond of actually my neighborhood and just to show you where the information is uh, originally searched for so first thing we want to do is go and get your FEMA flood map your your firm map for the um, piece of property that you're interested in and I put in my old zip code here and I want to research a piece of property that's in this area right here uh, so I type in the zip code it looks like the firm map is uh, grabbing the area of interest for me so that's good enough we go ahead and download the firm map uh, save it somewhere and you open it up. So I've already saved it in advance here. So let me pull it up. This is the FEMA firm map for the area of interest. Now this is gonna work with whatever address you put. You're gonna get your FEMA firm map if uh, if you download it so let's check it out now the area of interest that i am wanting to research is right off the banks of this bayou here this bayou is berry bayou and it's actually a tributary of sims bayou sims bayou is further north here so why we want to pull this up is the following. Um, we are interested in this callout right here. Uh, this callout references what is referred to as the um, flood profiles in the FEMA flood insurance study. Now, you'll see where this comes up, but uh, for now, let's make note of this. This is C106-00-00 Berry Creek or Berry Bayou. Um, so this is the information that you want to extract from the firm map for now. Now there's also obviously more information on here uh, that's valuable to us, like um, you know, this is the zones that we're in, this is the floodway, uh, we're in the 500 year here, this is uh, X shaded most likely yeah it's X shaded so we're in a 500 year X shaded flood zone in this area uh, good or bad you decide um, another thing that's important is the profile uh, this area of interest is right here the profile call out is going to be J so two things to note I'm sorry is the actual cut of the profile that we're interested in, which is going to be J, and then the call out for Sims or the uh, flood insurance study profile. So you'll see that come up. Going back to uh, FEMA website, we're going to go to show all products here, and then we're going to go and select the 
course it's going to go slow when I'm trying to make a video. But here we are. No results found. No, there we are. Uh, effective products. And then we're going to the FIS reports. So I've already gone through these, but uh, essentially what we want to find out is the files that contain the FEMA flood uh, insurance studies. And for Harris County, it's broken up into five different files. Uh, these are the file names right here. These were downloaded directly from the FEMA directory here. Uh, you can see that the file names correspond with the files that are available. So last four here is 004B. Uh, 004B starts here and we're going to go 2, 3, 4, 5. So these files right here are the ones that have the profiles that we're interested in for Harris County. Now this other stuff has important information uh, to somebody. For me that is looking for the actual charts of uh, where we read the 500 year flood elevations. Uh, it's not important but somebody may find some valuable information there that I'm not looking for in this video, in this example at least, so I'm not going to walk you through those. Once we have the files downloaded, you'll see here that, um, like I said, it's broken up into five different files. On Here on the left, it's going to show you the major watersheds of uh, Harris County. This is a Harris County flood insurance study. So I think it goes from A through W, showing you all the different um watersheds now just for just so you can see the table of content is going to be available for all the files only the exhibits where it actually shows the flood profiles is the one that's going to be uh, separated out into the different files now i typed in or i, I searched for buried bayou and we're going to see what comes up. This is the first file, so we got lucky. The first file actually included uh, Barry Bayou, and it'll show you here that it's a tributary of uh, Sims Bayou. So Sims Bayou is also the code C. Code C is the one of the uh, watersheds that's located in this file. So. We're in the correct file to search for what we're looking for. Now, remember the the little label that we had for Berry Bayou? Uh, we'll go back to the file and we'll see it here again. Uh, C106-00-00. So here is that tributary C106-00-00. So it shows that it's going to be on pages C10P through C12P. Um, we'll see how that's labeled right now. For now, we can go ahead and click on Sims by Watershed. And it closes here. Now we're looking for C10P, CO1, CO2, CO3. Uh, here we go. C10P. All right, C10P is where the C106-00-00 starts. And now we got to go look for the profile that we're interested in. So once again, we are interested in the J profile here. Uh, this is J cut right there. And you'll see that here are all the different profiles. Ours is right here. All right, now I've also already extracted this page for our example. So that same page is right here. And you'll notice that I've already drawn some lines to show how to read this particular flood profile to look at what we're needing to find. Um, the solid dark line is the point 
2% annual chance of flood, also known as your 500 year flood elevation. And this is what the city of Houston now references in order to determine the elevation that you're going to have to be on um, whatever building that you're developing. Um, so you go to J, draw your line. This is the solid bold line. You mark it, go across, and we just read off the chart. This one happens to be 26.8. So we are 26.8 uh, at our flood elevation. Now, keep in mind that City of Houston, since September 1st, has a plus 2 to the 500-year flood elevation. So whatever uh, dwelling that's going to be going out there is going to be 28.8 feet. Uh, finish floor elevation. Now this is for living area. Uh, you can do whatever you want if it's not a living area, like if it's just a storage, if it's just a garage, uh, anything like that does not have to abide to these rules. But if it's living area, then it is subject to meeting these requirements. Uh, so that that's basically it. You you've gone through where to find the information. You know, once again, we go to your FEMA flood map. You go to the firm, download your firm map. Once you download your firm map, you're going to need to determine what is the tributary code for it, or if it's actually on the Sims Bayou, it'll have a different code. Um, you're going to need your profile. Once you get all that, you find it within the files that are available here. Once again, we'll, we'll go through show all products and you'll see that you'll have the different FEMA flood profile. Uh, of course, it's also taking a while. There we go. And so effective products and FIS reports. Now, like I mentioned before, for Harris County, for Houston in general, it, it's mainly five files. Uh, it starts from, where is it, 004B, and then 2, 3, 4, 5. It's these files that are of interest to anybody that's looking for the 500 year flow elevation. Uh, I recommend going ahead and saving them somewhere if you're going to be referencing them uh, often. I've saved them here. Uh, here's my example. Uh, so anyway, that's where you get that information. Now, here is a little bonus for y'all. Uh, so, okay, 500 year flood elevation is good, but how is that going to help me with determining where or how high I got to be off the existing ground. Well, that's where you would have to hire an engineer surveyor to provide you a elevation certificate. And that is something we do provide. So contact us if you need this. But if you're looking for a preliminary uh, kind of ballpark, which is actually pretty accurate, uh, then Google Earth is... Uh, a very very good source to give you this preliminary information now this is my area of interest this is the property that I'm interested in and I have already have a line drawn but we're gonna go through the steps of actually drawing a, uh, a profile so wherever your piece of property is um, we're gonna click up here to add path, we're going to select two points so that it adds a line. Um, this title it something, I'm going to title it backyard two. So we have one. Uh, it's going to be added to your places. Then you can right click on that and then select on show the elevation profile. And now you will see that you have a cursor 
that is showing you what that elevation profile is. Now, I will mention that the vertical datum used in Google Earth is the WGS84, and the vertical datum used in the FEMA Firmaps um, is something different. So there is going to be a slight change. It's not a direct apples to apples comparison, but for preliminary, it's good enough. Uh, here it goes. We got a uh, vertical datum. Here it is. North America vertical datum 1988. So this firm app references 1988. The FEMA flood uh, profiles. Uh, I believe it's the same vertical datum. Don't quote me on that one. Somewhere I'm sure it says what it's referencing. But um, but anyway, just for the information, just, just for some preliminary quick information gathering, we... Uh, we usually use Google Earth to give us a ballpark of um, what the topography of the property is and if it's worth uh, possibly buying a piece of property where we're going to be trying to build a house. Obviously, if the house is going to be needing to be 10 feet off of the existing ground because of the new rules, then that's going to impact the uh, economics of everything, uh, the design of everything. And... It may not be feasible after a preliminary study is done. So that's why we we do this study and we're able to determine uh, if, if something's going to make sense or not. But um, usually whenever we take it off of Google Earth, it's, it's pretty close to what we actually get in our field data measurements, which are reference off of uh, benchmarks, which are referenced to whatever datums use, converted to whatever datum we need to be in uh, for our elevation certificates. So going through the elevation certificate, it's a little bit more complicated sometimes, um, but it, it typically is in the ballpark of what Google Earth gives you, uh, just a little bit more accurate once we actually do the field work. So that was your, your bonus tip there. And I hope this helps everybody uh, when they're trying to determine your 500-year flood elevation. And uh, if y'all need any help with any elevation certificates, we are happy to be of service to y'all. Flood elevation certificates is something we offer. Uh, we also offer uh, topographic surveys uh, and slew of many other services so feel free to contact us anytime uh, that's jose rocha and i'm with 3h engineering and construction and good day thank you